Uh, well, so last week um, we started with this uh, unit seven, uh, the design analysis resolution, where uh, we first um, covered the security, privacy, all the concepts regarding that. And still the DAR process, the whole process, the whole PPT was still left out and we need to finish it up today. Let's get started with the DAR, the design analysis resolution. Uh, we will learn about what this process is basically. Um, then what are the different types of terms or concepts associated with it and after understanding the this process, you will be able to um, implement this concept for uh, in a in a problem that I'll be assigning to you. Uh, about that, we will go through the problem, the assignment after we finish up with our PPD. So let's see what is this DAR process. You should all be seeing the presentation. Um, about design analysis resolution. If you couldn't see it, please let me know. So design analysis and resolution, um, it's a process um, or a methodology which is used to analyze the possible decisions using a formal evaluation process, uh, which evaluates the identified alternatives against uh, established criteria. So, uh, it's uh, basically to before making a certain decision um, in the software industry. So it is better to uh, do a thorough DAR process, the design analysis and resolution process, and um, then reach to a final conclusion about what process or what possible uh, decisions you need to make. And this process involves may involve establishing the guidelines to determine which issues should be subject to a formal evaluation process and applying the formal evaluation process to these rules. Uh, so here there are two things. Um, let's let me take you to this agenda. So objective and uh, subjective. The main technique is to uh, understand what are the subjective and the objective decision making process actually and how to analyze possible decisions using a formal evaluation process that evaluates identified alternatives against established criteria. Um, so it's something like if you are going through a certain decision making process, if there are multiple alternatives available to you, so based on what type of criteria um, or uh, de yeah, decision making criteria, you can make a successful decision. Um, so that's, uh, that is your basically your DAR process. Uh, so the main technique is to turn the um, subjective decision making into objective pro process. We are going to see a comparison in between the subjective and the objective versions. So let's see here. So what are the objective and the subjective? So there are basically um, number of philosophical issues relating to the questions of objectivity and uh, subjectivity of a statement, judgment or information. So a statement is said to be objective when it is based on uh, facts and it can be um, proved easily and is impossible to deny. Okay, uh, so here for both the terms objective and subjective, you can see the meaning on what they are based on, what is the truth, verification, reporting and the decision making usefulness. And um, so uh, although in the absence of facts on a matter, um, here we can come to the subjective term. So here the speaker presents um, his or her opinion, which is always biased based on certain type of assumptions, beliefs or opinions. So subjective perspective is mostly based on personal feelings, likes, interests, dislikes. Okay, hope you uh, got the understanding about the objective and the subjective terms. And um, 
you can see that the objective person is always useful for decision making because it is based on the facts and observation whereas subjective is not okay let's see um, the DAR uh, steps so what are the different steps so first you need to establish the criteria so so based on different types of conditions or factors so it may be uh, your technology limitations or what type of environment in which you are developing the um, technology or in which your requirement is based on various priorities or costs um, then um, the software project you may have to um, consider about the technical expertise the cost or the time for development and other issues so let's say you if you want to purchase a new phone you might have to make a decision uh, based on its cost operating system your battery life or other criteria so in order to make a decision in the DAR process you should at least have four to five criteria and each of the criteria need to be uh, provided with some or assigned with some sort of importance um, scores or numbers and it can range from one up to n so one is the least important and n um, it could be any number and it is the most important the higher the number it's better and the weightage is higher and based on the weightage the highest score you will make a decision about it um, so it's perfectly acceptable to have a criteria with the same importance way uh, way okay so let's see the TR process the steps so first you need to select the methods for evaluating and scoring the different alternatives first you need to find out what are the different alternatives are there then uh, you need to use some sort of words to reflect the importance of that particular criteria so you need to remember this so um, you can scale it in the basis of 0 to 10 so low to high or um, 0 to 3 where 0 is poor 1 is uh, below average 2 is average and 3 is good so while scaling or scoring the importances of different criteria you need to keep this in mind and the scales need to be appropriate uh, for a specific type of criteria category then you need to evaluate the alternatives um, so you need to uh, use the um, established criteria methods or solution alternatives and each of the solution could be uh, numbered based on a certain type of score then you need to select uh, the solution and make a recommendation based on those important scores let's um, see where in what type of scenarios uh, we can uh, use the DAR process so some of the examples um, the DAR can be applied for formal evaluations where we have basically two or more alternatives and objectivity is required for selection of best alternatives and um, some of the examples of DAR can be applied for the selection of various um, uh, technology stack solution options may be related to hardware software tools programming language uh, the ID integrated development environment configuration management and the application lifecycle management and uh, for the vendor hiring process budget allocation or any definite type of decision strategic decision making process so you it is now not only can just use this for soft in the software industry decision making process rather you can use the same dark process for making a big purchase so maybe you are purchasing a car phone or a laptop or certain other type of materialistic things so you could use a dr tar process so how is it created actually uh, the dar the spreadsheet or table style analysis what are you supposed to do you need to it is best uh, always best to use a microsoft excel worksheet where it will have a set of columns and rows in the form of a table so for each of the criteria or alternatives you need to uh, have columns um, then you need to, to, to add the scores or the weighing you need to add uh, the weights you need to add another one column 
and this, uh, you need to label the solution alternatives as the column headers and uh, for each solution alternative and uh, its total score you need to add a column for that and uh, each row will uh, signify for each of the separate criteria and the last score finally what we do we need to calculate a total score that will be the last row so let's see how it is actually done the whole process is explained through the various steps how um, a particular how to go with a certain type of criteria or what product to choose let's see one example a windsurfer example so we will create a dar report um, for a windsurfer who is about to replace their car and um, he has an interest in a feature which carries a board and uh, cells but also one which will be good for travel business travel so uh, the criteria is not only carrying a board or uh, cells but then also needed for their day-to-day -day business travel purpose uh, so let's see what are the different types of alternatives or solutions an SUV um, the other alternative is a family car a station wagon or a sports car and the different criteria they are considering uh, these are the basically criteria we are supposed to score them in the through the import by using the importance scores or the importance labels so one of them is costs the importance is for but is ability to carry a cell or board safely it's the highest importance that is five to store cells or equipment importance is pretty low that is one comfort uh, over uh, long distances is the second uh, importance fun is importance three look and build quality is uh, somehow important five the most important is the ability to carry a cell and board safely so these are the criteria and uh, method for scoring is each option for each of the criteria as your option you need to scale it uh, in between zero and five zero as poor and five as very good so let's see what is what is actually done here um, so for um, all the options or solution um, alternatives you need to put them in different columns uh, so that is for the criteria that you saw in the previous slide they are all here cost carry board storage comfort font look and quality in different rules then the importance numbers and that is given in the problem itself um, the cost has what in, uh, importance that is uh, written over here we just add it to the next column then uh, we add different solution alternatives such as sports car suv family car station wagon then as i have added for each of the alternatives you need to add a score column after each of the alternatives then um, here um, the sports car uh, the based on the cost criteria the importance is four carry board it's zero storage is zero comfort is two uh, so based on the availability or likability you need to um, make the scoring then fun uh, numbering in the look quality then in the score what you need to decide whatever is your importance and the uh, alternative or the uh, options score whatever you have you just basically multiply them 4 into 4 16 5 into 0 0 uh, your uh, 1 into 0 0 so like this you will calculate the scores then similarly uh, you find out the importance scores for each of the criteria for SUV family car station wagon so station wagon has the cost criteria as four carry board as five uh, for storage three comfort three fun zero and look and quality three so once you have all the scores for each of the criteria types now the next thing is to sum them up so every uh, options or alternative scores are to be added now in the last row so here the sports car score is 52 suv uh, is 54 
family car is 37 and the station wagon is the highest with 62 important score so this is what um, um, based on the important score we will go with the station wagon the winning uh, solution alternative is the station wagon based on the scoring here that we got um, finally so this is how the DAR process is done uh, the synopsis why is it useful for making the objective decisions formalizing the decision choosing between different alternatives or to build or buy different decisions and uh, frequently asked questions can there be a um, tie in any situation yes in order to add additional criteria um, at the criteria importance you know you can adjust or um, relocate again review again the criteria of importance weighing can this be done as group yes if uh, it is always good to do it together and uh, do you need to do this process for all decision uh, so no actually no it will work best for choosing between different alternatives if you have different alternatives then it is useful and uh, the benefits it's based on objective always helps with making the decisions important decisions in a better easier way effectively saves time and uh, in the software development life cycle phase it could be done at the any of the stages um, it's viable in any of the stage so that's all and these are some useful links if you want to read more details in more details so we are done with the DAR. The next um, thing is to discuss about the sorry about it. Discuss about the assignment. Here uh, you need to perform a DAR, do an uh, DAR analysis. Uh, so for buying your next car, computer, cell phone, etc. So these there are different sections you need to uh, L De provide details for each of the sections and how do you come up with a final decision so try to perform the DAR and uh, actually use it use an excel file uh, the way I have just shown you in the presentation all the columns and rows so it's better to it's best to do it in an excel file okay uh, and there is a test that's all in this chapter. If you have any questions, please let me know. If no, we will move ahead with um, our next uh, chapter. It's an implementation and version control. So our next chapter, Unit 8, uh, we will see the description about the choices of technology, uh, various IDEs, Program Language Configuration Management System, and uh, how the configuration management is actually done. So um, the Unit 8 Configuration Management, um, let's see what do we have here in this chapter. So configuration management is actually a system engineering process. It establishes the consistency of a project's performance, functionality, and physical attributes. It maintains the product with its requirement, uh, design, uh, operational information throughout the life cycle. It's uh, widely used by engineering organizations to manage changes throughout the life cycle and also helps to uh, document and improve the performance, reliability, maintainability, reducing the cost, reduce the risk or liability, and report, track, and correct the defects. So these are the things, those are achieved in the configuration management. So, as I mentioned, the configuration management uh, is a system engineering process, right? 
and uh, it's a practice for tracking the operational items and their attributes and uh, it can capture the valuable information of the processes such as incident management, problem management, change management, maintenance, safety and the risk management. And um, if the processes and tools which verifies that a system performs as intended, uh, for that also the configuration management is very helpful. So for an example, uh, let's say there is a telecom firm which maintains this configuration management uh, um, tool. Uh, database and it includes the relationship between different components which is used to automatically determine the impact of failures in the telecom firm. So for example, if a router goes down, the firm has immediate access to a list of impacted services and customers through the configuration management database. And the company can call the customers to tell them uh, that their service is down before they typically notice it. Okay. So it's a uh, discipline um, and uh, it's discipline um, for configuring uh, the configuration planning management. So what do we have here in the planning management? Uh, various performance measurement, incident analysis, change approval process, worsening control or access interaction, then in configuration identification. Um, this mostly deal with um, setting and maintaining the baselines, defining the system architecture, components or any other developments at any point of time. Then in configuration control process, it uh, step it involves uh, sorry it includes the evaluation of all um, change request, change proposal, or uh, subsequent approval or disapproval. Uh, mostly covers the process of controlling modifications to the system design, hardware, software, and other type of documentation. In status and accounting of items, project and information, uh, mostly includes the process of recording, reporting configuration item. Uh, it may be hardware, um, software, etc. The descriptions and all departures from the baseline during design and production. So in the event of suspected problems, the verification of uh, configuration and approved modification can be quickly compared and accessed. Then verification and audit of items, project, etc. It uh, verifies that system and subsystem configuration documentation um, complies with uh, functional and physical performance characteristics before acceptance into baseline. The goals. Um, configuration management is mostly focused on knowledge of items assets and the relationships and how they work collectively and uh, it is a, a component of a system that is treated as a self-contained unit for the purposes of identification and change control it can also establish a basis for accurate readily available information to support efficient decision making um, it uh, supports incident and problem management change management and release management also uh, provides based audit and control of configuration records um, and uh, can provide various and also include uh, various corrective actions in uh, presence of different discrepancies which may be identified in various situations and common activities um, so these are the common activities first to identify the software releases in the configuration identification, their versions, levels for event handling prevention, then change control reduce to reduce the impact of software changes, uh, downstream upstream impacts, etc. Uh, in improvements, the change incident and problem management uh, activities can improve. Um, then, then communication between in, uh, units through different aggregated, com common aggregated view um, or through other various um, ways. 
and uh, then improvements could be in software hardware ownership law, knowledge and reliability and uh, they can also proactively identify high risk failure points and uh, in addition to that it can implement the documentation management solutions various benefits um, delivers higher quality uh, helps us to avoid the problems reduces most cost um, effective product services uh, improves the disaster recovery by ensuring that the assets are more easily recoverable due to mandated backups and uh, res uh, somehow restore the services in an outage quicker it can increase the uptime and site reliability um, by referring to how often a service is actively running since each second of downtime could cost thousands or more and scales easier um, by making an ability to add resources to a running application easier and ensures that one knows what a good state is and how to increase the resources but there are some challenges in configuration management in form of flexibility um, such as uh, how to maintain the flexibility enabling um, uh, the response to ever-changing market dy dynamics visibility uh, where it may be tremendously difficult to analyze the overwhelming amount of configuration management separating the critical from the non-critical to make sense of it all um, or uses usage of multiple environments change validation and other associated um, challenges variabilities so these are the important um, concepts that we have uh, in the configuration management so configuration management um, is a process of establishing and maintaining consistency of a product and uh, not only uh, just it, it, it just address a perfect requirement and design it can also effectively um, uh, or, or properly address the performance functionality and other physical attributes uh, it can involve high degree of automation, uh, easier to build in different checks or steps and redundancies and uh, reduce potential of omissions due to human error and promotes accuracy. Okay. But it needs the document, uh, some sort of documentation tools, versioning and discipline and applicable to um, artifacts in form of documents design scores from all the phases of your software development life cycle here are some of the useful links uh, provided there are different resources you could go through these links to learn more uh, in details about the configuration management process So with this, um, we just learned what this configuration management is actually and what is being done here. Um, some more additional videos on implementation version control, I have provided it here. Um, there is just one test in this unit, you need to just complete. And you can click on the link to view the due date. Uh, does anyone have any questions? <laughs>